this one is, has been has seen some serious abuse over the years. At one point, it was painted red by an 80s punk rock band. And probably around that time, it was refinished, uh, refretted, and they coated it with a clear polyurethane. It doesn't seem like they sanded the original polyester finish at all. I would have sanded it with like 320 grit first so that the polyurethane had something to stick to. So we'll be chipping that off of there. In this um, video I'll be covering stripping the polyurethane finish off of the fretboard, preparing the fretboard for new frets, we'll be sanding the neck and the body, and we'll be patching in some of the missing northern ash wood from the back here. The northern ash wood veneers. I've got a piece that has more of an open grain on it like this down in this area here that's going to be perfect for that spot. And then we'll take the electronics which are the original ones off of this pick guard and install them onto this here black new black one. We'll probably have to do a little relicking also to make everything look like it's a original 1970s. Let's have a look at that gouge here real quick. You can just see all the dirt that's been collecting down in there over the years. Um, good news is, you won't see any of this when I'm done with it. I found the veneer I was looking for. This is what I was trying to explain, that I had a better piece to go into that gouge on the back of the body. See this area here of uh, open-grained late wood? And that would be early wood, late wood, early wood, late wood. You know, we're talking about the annual growth rings of the tree. In a plain sawn piece, we see a lot more of this open late wood uh, grain line. And in a quarter sawn piece, you see more of this straight, close together kind of stuff. So this will be the area that we'll use as the donor piece. That will match the best. We also have to consider which way to... We're going to orient it this way or that way. This way or that way. If there's a grain run out that will happen, you have to look at it and and with a backlighting and we'll look at the body of the guitar and with the same backlighting and we'll determine which way the grain is running out. That way I insert the donor piece in the right uh, grain run out direction. Sometimes you just have to do barbaric stuff. Sometimes it's pretty, sometimes it ain't. So really, I'm chipping away about halfway. I come and push down. We'll start on the other end, and that's it. I come right out. Yeah, get a little solder on there. Watch that little puff of smoke at the end here. Puff, see that? Call that Puff the Magic Dragon. He lived by the sea. Yes, he lived by a place called Stonehenge. Over there. All down by the seashore. Just like that. See, if these were the original frets, they wouldn't want to come out this way. They'd You have to push them sideways. So, looking by the lack of tear out here, whoever did this fret job was aware about the sideways fender fret installation and removal technology. So, I don't know about why they would put this thick polyurethane. Maybe they took a trip down to the Ace Hardware store and they just grabbed a gallon of polyurethane and thought, you know, desperate times call for test desperate measures. And there was just this fretboard was starting to look kind of shoddy. And there wasn't a lot of information around at the time. You know, there were trade secrets between special guys, but it wasn't common knowledge that Super glue 
is really the best finish repair for polyester. And now they've got this new stuff called Glue Boost. It's not really that new right now, but I just new to me. I just ordered some. It comes in a big old bunch of uh, some big old bottles right there. These bottles are they're like three times the size of the Stumac little bottles or the Loctite stuff that you get over at Lowe's. I guess the accelerator is the best stuff there is. All right, so I put that heat lamp on there for about five inches away from the nut with the pieces of sheet steel like that protecting the wood. Five minutes, five inches. Then I was able to come in with the end cutters and gently remove that old nut feels like graphite material. Um, might call it tusk material. Good stuff. Progress report here. I started off with 120 grit and did a bunch of sanding and a bunch of drop filling of the glue boost into the low spots. Made my way up to uh, 220 grit and then 320 grit and what I do is uh, there's a strip of leather right here I don't want to do any sanding like this I don't want to screw up the radius of the fretboard so I just take my sandpaper and I put it over top with some tape this was a 320 and I do a little sanding see that spot that I glue boosted yesterday it's got a little high spot there I will sand that till it's all nice and level. Okay, won't bore you with that, but you can kind of see there's some little spots, little white specks. Um, those are the low spots. Those are like little spots I can drop fill super glue into and then sand again. Good thing for the accelerator makes it quick work. I'm removing some of the decaying or rotted wood out of that area with a chisel. Then I'm gonna measure the depth and decide how much epoxy putty to fill in, leaving enough height for my ashwood veneer and a little extra for the top coat finish. Ideally, I want the ash donor piece to be slightly underneath the existing finish so that I can build up a new finish that's level with the existing. Right here, I'm making a crisp edge around the outside perimeter of the, the gouge. This I learned on uh, Ian Davlin's uh, Patreon group I subscribed and uh, really enjoying that, learning some new things, trade secrets. I'm going to cut out the ash veneer with scissors and then uh, glue it in place with some Loctite gel control super glue. The epoxy putties, the uh, light colored material you see there. There's the gel super glue. Going to use an abundant amount of it. Spread it around with a uh, X Acto blade. And we'll press the veneer into the gouge. We'll take a little piece of wax paper with some super glue accelerator brushed onto it. And put that wax paper over the uh, donor piece and then press it down for about two minutes with my uh, little dowel sticks. This is the super glue accelerator wax paper and a wooden dowel.
the veneer is thin enough that it'll kind of warp into the shape of the gouge. After it's in, though, I'm going to go in with more sandpaper on a uh, plexiglass piece and well, this is the first level sanding here with a block. And uh, it may have been a mistake, but I pour filled first before I sand it. Now I've pour filled it with this brownish reddish pour filler. It's just a water based pour filler. There's a couple spots. After I sand that back, it'll probably need to be whitewashed because you can see here this plug is quite yellow compared to the rest. And I believe that's, I call it whitewash. Here we go now, we got frets in there. I just started to trim the ends. And I got pore filler. It was a sort of uh, light brownish red pore filler. And there's that patch. Gonna have to use some staining techniques next. It's pour filled, but now it needs some color added to it so it blends in with the surrounding aged ash. The fret ends are in need of a little trimming, a little bit of filing, and uh, I'm going to rough them in so I can use my bevel file next. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water thin super glue. I think that's Stumac number 10 with a whip tip. I don't always add super glue in around fret jobs. Only on maple fretboards that I recall. Um, you wouldn't need it on a rosewood fretboard. Although I've seen people use super glue to hold frets in on rosewood fretboards. I don't prefer that method. I'm doing a lot of sanding today. I'm up to uh, 1200 grit on these. I just wanted to kind of show what I do as far as sanding the polyester. I'm taking the sandpaper and I'm getting it ready to wrap it around the sanding stick. And once it's wrapped around the sanding stick, I go in like this. And I start at 400 grit and I go all the way up to 1200 grit. So 400, 600, 800, 1200. And uh, in between I do some of these Scotch Bright. This time I used uh, some of the maroon and some of the gray. So it's really boring to watch and it's actually kind of boring to perform this procedure, but that's it. And then once I get uh, done with the 12, I got like five more spaces there. Then I'll just flip one of these over. They start at uh, 1500, right here's 1500. So then I can, at this point, I can just use the, the stick. And then you can go like back and forth, flip it over, you get a little higher grit. Then you go to the next one. And a few minutes later, in from the garage and I gotta say that this is one of the restorations that's just really came out good um, considering where it was and what it looked like when it came in and what I planned to do with it not knowing you know what kind of horrors what, what I was gonna find that underneath that crackle polyurethane finish and that this is the original finish on here I did not spray a new finish this is the original polyester finish from the Fender factory in Fullerton California in 1971 and I got it looking like it hasn't even had too much of a hard life really you know um, some of it's missing down here on the end I sanded through and wiped on a few coats of shellac so far but that could use a little something a little thicker I think. I'm going to try this method. 
is the first time that uh, I've ever tried to use this stuff. Potassium permanganate. Permanganate. And swoosh it on there. And watch it turn brown. It's not exactly bare wood as I've already put a little pore filler in there and stuff but let's see what happens Potassium permanganate. Not too bad. Try a little more. little inconsistencies in the color but it turned out okay the body's fresh in from the garage I had it hanging in the window spraying the satin lacquer on the body I did about three or four coats of amber shellac over the back to kind of gel everything together now I'm reconnecting the out or the uh, ground wire to the tailpiece bridge Pickups installed with some new screws, a new black pickguard, but all the old original electronics still work. All the screw holes line up. The one thing that the pickguard did not have was that uh, thumb rest up there on the base side near the neck. So I had to figure out a way to line that those holes up with the holes in the body. Drill some new holes. Hey man, I got these number 25 screws. They're like totally relic. That's pretty cool. So I don't know how they're gonna fit too good. Let's see. Pretty cool. At this point we can do our circuit analysis and you can see that we've got 10.9 ohmages. Okay. Output jack. Got our tip and our ground. 
the tip is red and the ground is black. And you clip to these two leads. And that'd be 10.9 thousand homages. Guitar hanger. Right, let's get this baby going. Next thing that we can do is work on putting in a nut. That's a good looking nut blank. That should work just fine. That should work just fine, just fine, just fine. This one looks fairly good. I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah. Well, she's roughed in. Rough, rough. Now we're working on putting back on the machines. Hold on, let me get a hockey puck. The Mighty Ducks hockey puck will work. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. I lived that down there in Anaheim for Oh, I guess it was about 12 years. In the shadow of the mouse, they call it. The shadow of Disneyland. Shadow of the mouse. Stringeth, treeth. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. That's wobbling all over the place, too. Oh, mama. Another thing that's cool to do on these old things is, is I noticed there's a little, some little stain of some kind of green paint of some sorts right there. Maybe it got stuck under a layer of the lacquer. Well, it's okay to dig that out and let me not forget where it was. I've got this uh, waxy brown stained stuff. 
you can kind of just uh, make some little relic markings. Rub that in. You can rub that on the all over the place. Pulled out the Accor here to see what <clears throat> what we need to collect on this job, and it looks like 875 smackers. He paid me $250 already, so this job was $1,030 plus tax. And it's looking getting pretty spanky already. I'm gonna put some more dings. I gotta take this neck back off of here and. Uh, Tighten the truss rod up. I, it's completely loose. I mean, I don't know about completely, but it's really loose. some of those base nut slotting files that go all the way up to an eighth of an inch 0.125 that's a pretty fat file I finally figured out a way to get the thumb rest lined up with the existing hole in the body um, the pit guard didn't come with that extra screw hole so I took a thin piece of mylar and laid it along the neck in the pickup with the pit guard off and traced a little with a sharpie I put a little dot on there to show where the hole should be and then I put the pit guard back on and uh, transferred the hole. This is what they call the ash tray. I guess you, most people end up taking them off and just using them for an ash tray because you cannot adjust your uh, pickup, I mean your string height or your intonation screws with this ash tray on there. One more screw. 